Welcome back. We have been speaking with Ashish Gupta, Managing Director and Financial Sector Specialist at Credit Suisse. We have discussed the extent of stress in corporate and bank balance sheets. Now we are looking for solutions. Well, the economic survey says growth will not cure the stress because 1. The earnings of indebted companies have been falling from 20,000 crore rupees per quarter in 2015 to 15,000 rupees per quarter in 2016. Secondly, debt of the top 10 stressed groups has tripled in the past six years as they borrow to meet current expenses and past debt. Thirdly, private investment has slowed and is now contracting. Fourthly, 13 banks are reeling with 20% of their loans already having gone bad. Largely, therefore, banks don't have the capital to make fresh loans. Well, Ashish, won't the normal evolutionary process of growth cure all this stress? You know, companies get more orders, product prices rise, volumes grow, and so the stress as a percentage of total revenue decreases. Uh, I do hope uh, it uh, helps some of uh, the corporates and some of the groups uh, uh, reduce their stress. But uh, I don't believe that can be a solution for the entire problem. Um, and uh, um, the reason being, A, the scale of the problem is very large, and B, that uh, this problem has been festering now for at least four or five year years. And therefore, Already the aggregate leverage of these stress companies is much higher than their peers. So if you see uh, today there are steel companies which are very very profitable uh, while still you have steel companies or half of the steel companies that are unable to cover their interest costs. Right? And uh, uh, the primary reason for that is uh, the half that does not cover uh, their interest costs, their debt levels are too high. Right. So uh, the waiting game does, does not help here because uh, you need to right size the debt. Yeah, so even in power there is uh, uh, many such cases where the capital cost per megawatt or debt per megawatt is uh, much higher uh, today for uh, some of the projects that have been delayed for four or five years uh, um, and uh, uh, it is even uh, uh, higher than what it would cost to set up a greenfield uh, project today. You know, the economic survey says of the top 100 stressed borrowers, 10 of them will need more than 50% of the debt to be cancelled and 57 yeah. will need 75% of their debt to be cancelled, which means two-thirds of the companies need more than 50% of the debt to be cancelled. Any idea what is the quantum of debt that is uh, so unsustainable that we are talking about? So, uh, I uh, don't have those numbers at the top of my head, but uh, uh, what we estimate is that uh, if banks w w uh, need to do a fair level of provisioning uh, on uh, these uh, stress loans, that is get to a NPA coverage of about 65-70%, uh, then they need additional $20 billion of capital. Uh, another number I can provide you is that uh, just in the next 12 months, uh, because our RBI provisioning requirements are based on the age of NPAs, uh, 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 Indian banks will need 86,000 crores of additional provisions just on existing NPAs. Because uh, as you may recall, a lot, lot of these NPAs were uh, recognized uh, after RBI's AQR one year ago. And uh, uh, as we uh, move into the second year, uh, there's a step up in provisioning that is needed. Uh, what about the banks, uh, Ashish? Uh, would you say you are less worried about the top five banks like say ICICI, SBI, BOB, who have NPAs in single digits? Do you think that uh, on the other extreme, those with over 20% GNPAs just need some political surgery or they won't survive? Uh, but the other way to look at it would be that you have to find a solution asset-wise or borrower-wise, right? So uh, if you are going to try to identify 
25 or 50 borrowers and uh, uh, find a solution for that magnitude of debt, that will uh, uh, virtually touch every bank. As I said, uh, most of these borrowers are dealing with 30 to 40 banks. So it's uh, difficult to kind of uh, f uh, find a solution for the single bank because uh, 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 the borrower that is stressed has relationship across the banking system. Now let me come to the bad bank idea. Both you and the economic survey say that bankers have lost the will to sign on decisions like, you know, uh, foregoing debt. But then, you know, even in a bad bank, the problem will remain the same, won't it? You, do you see any bureaucrat, any babu having the guts to cut down a large part of the debt of a known large defaulter. Will he have the spine? Sure. So, uh, uh, that uh, really uh, can be resolved uh, based on the structuring of the bad bank, right? So, if the bad bank is structured where uh, the government ownership is not in excess of 51%, uh, where there is additional contribution to the equity if, from the banks themselves or from uh, state-owned enterprises, uh, etc., uh, uh, thereby giving government an effective control uh, or an effective majority, uh, then some of these challenges uh, uh, may not exist. And uh, uh, so a lot will depend on how the bad bank is structured and empowered uh, uh, if it is decided to be set up. But clearly, uh, uh, this will be one of the a uh, basic uh, question that needs to be thought through uh, uh, when the decision of setting up a bad bank is taken. So just setting up a bad bank in the public uh, sector domain does not help unless it is equipped uh, uh, to be able to uh, undertake faster decision making. So do you think the answer lies in something like the, you know, the previous government's PMG, the project monitoring group led by Anil Swaroop, uh, you know, uh, that group coordinates with all the ministries and the banks and forces them to take a solution? So, uh, 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 so there can be various structures that are looked at. So, I guess uh, what you are essentially referring to is uh, rather than bad bank have a balance sheet, uh, it just uh, 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 becomes uh, an off balance sheet uh, uh, structure uh, 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 where the assets continue to sit with the banks and uh, so someone else tries to resolve them. Right, uh, 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 but uh, the challenge therefore uh, comes out is that uh, 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 in that case, uh, again, uh, 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 the decision will have to be taken by individual bank and bank boards, uh, uh, e even if, say, a, a project monitoring group uh, decides on a particular structure, and uh, then it would need to go to individual banks to be ratified. Okay, finally, what is the bill that the nation faces for writing off or providing for all this corporate stress? So, I think uh, uh, that number uh, will vary somewhere between 15 to 30 billion dollars uh, depending on uh, uh, how soon uh, uh, this kind of structure is set up and uh, how quickly uh, they uh, come to the resolution of these cases and sell down these cases because as you know the value of these assets decays very fast so the longer you wait uh, uh, the higher the bill goes ashish gupta always a pleasure speaking with you thank you very much for joining me so key takeaways from ashish uh, who is uh, a gold mine of uh, uh, information one, that uh, the worst of corporate and bank stress is not over. The g uh, gross NPLs of banks, which start at 9.5%, could end at, you know, about 13 to 14%, some four or five quarters down the line. Secondly, bankers and corporates left to themselves may not be able to solve uh, at least a large part of the current stress on the, uh, their balance sheets. Thirdly, a bad bank may not be uh, uh, the only solution, especially if uh, bureaucrats also are not willing to cancel debt like bankers are. But some kind of policy support from outside the banking system is needed to goad the bankers to take some surgical decisions. That's it on this edition of Indianomics. Thanks for watching.